Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Assimilate Inc. And I'm back again with another Scratch tutorial. And in this lesson, we're talking scaling and guides and how the two go hand in hand together. I want to show you how important it is to be able to see in your timeline exactly what is going on with the sizing of your clip based on the resolution of your timeline. And that is where guides come into play. Now, I want to keep our introduction short. Let's just get into Scratch and let's get started. All right, so as you can see, we are in Scratch. I have my project selected and I'm going to come down and simply enter the project. Now, the first thing that I want to point out is the fact that I've deleted all the media from this project because in this lesson, I really only want to focus on one or two clips just to keep things as simple and as straightforward as possible. Second thing that's important for me to point out is the fact that this timeline is actually not the right resolution for what I want to do. You'll notice down here it's 3840 by 2160. So for me to change that, all I need to do is to simply head to the render queue and I can now change this to whatever size frame that I want to be working with. That's good. If I come back to the construct module, you'll now see that we are dealing with 1920 by 1080, 2398 frames per second. All right, so that's a great little shortcut for you to keep in mind if the timeline is not the resolution you want once you go into your project, just head on over to the render module and you can quickly and easily change it. Now let's bring in some media. I'm gonna come down to the import clips option. I'm just gonna bring in a couple of our horror show day one scenes. I'm simply going to say open. Again, this footage comes to us courtesy of CineStudy, formerly Framelines. You can check them out at vimeo.com slash framelines. Check them out for some great free footage that you can follow along in this lesson with if you'd like to. All right, now you're gonna notice that when I go to bring this media in, I'm immediately told by Scratch, well, hang on a second. Something's going on here because either the resolution frame rate or the aspect doesn't match what's going on in the timeline there's something going on here, they're different. So what do you wanna do? Do you wanna match the timeline to the clips that you're bringing in or leave it? I do not wanna update the current timeline. I'm gonna take these two clips, I'm gonna drop them into slot zero and slot one. Always keep in mind the first slot is slot zero, not slot one. How do I know that? Because it actually says slot zero right there, all right? Now, let's take a look at what's going on with these clips because this is important. A lot of what people do as soon as they get footage in is they jump right to the edit module. Now here's where things kind of get a little bit confusing. It kind of looks like we have this weird box happening here and I'm not really sure what is going on. And if I take my footage and center it up in the window, it's even more confusing because we kind of have some bright blue, we have some dark blue. And if I start dragging through, things are just not looking the way that they need to. Now, if I wanted to get in and start moving this image around on the canvas, what I can do is hold Option or Alt and click and drag backwards or forwards to show where this clip is actually sitting. What I can do if I want to reposition it in the canvas is I can simply hold the space bar and then move it wherever I want it to go. All right, so there's two great shortcuts for you. Now let's talk about what exactly is happening with this sort of weird framing thing here. I'm gonna head back to the construct module and this is why I wanted to talk about the media browser before we talked about anything else because the media browser is gonna be your go-to tool, I guarantee you, so you can figure out what's going on with all of your footage. So let's do this. I'm gonna head to the media browser. You'll see now that in our main window, I can see the two, Im or the two clips right here. Now, again, I did mention this in the last lesson and I'm gonna point it out again here. If I head to the edit module and I select clip number two, I head back to the construct module, you can see it's selected there. And if I go to the media browser, you can see it's selected there. So we talked about that in the last lesson. I just wanted to point it out again right here. But what I wanna really draw your attention to right here is 3840 by 2160. So as you can tell right now, this image is actually double the frame size of the current raster dimension that we're working with of 1920 by 1080. So we either need to do one of two things. We need to work with it the way that it is because what's going on here is that if I head back to the edit module, what I'm actually seeing here is my 1920 by 1080 frame and the size of the UHD clip inside of that frame. Now, you might want to work like this. Maybe you are shooting in your matting for scope aspect ratio and you're going to need to get in and make some you know, vertical adjustments with your footage. You can work with larger than HD footage in an HD timeline if you want to, but that's not what we want to do here. And when you install Scratch, by default, we don't have any of the options turned on to show us basically what's going to be our frame size or any guides or anything like that. This is why I thought it was exceptionally important to talk about this earlier in the course as opposed to waiting until later on 
because you can get confused kind of quickly. So let's talk about what's going on with the guides. And to get to the guides, we're going to head to our settings. Now you'll notice that if you're in the construct window, you don't have access to the settings from here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head to the edit module or even in the color effects module. I'm going to select settings and I'm going to select guides. Now we're going to ignore the regular guides for right now. Now, normally people associate guides with safe picture and safe title. That's to be perfectly honest, completely understandable. And that does come into play inside of Scratch, but not right off the bat for the purposes of what we want to do. The first thing that I want to do is I need to see the actual frame size, 1920 by 1080, so I get an easy visual representation of exactly what's going on with this footage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and I'm going to turn the border on. So if I get out of the settings now, I'm just going to recenter everything up. You'll now see that with our 1920 by 1080 frame size centered up, I can see exactly what is going on with my footage right now. Now, if I wanted to at this point not see any of the extraneous information that's happening outside of that, I'm just going to hold option and zoom back. You'll see all of this extra information here. What we can do is simply head back to the settings and we can crop all of that out. So we're only going to see what's contained within the frame. All right. Now, for me personally, I always like to see what's going on outside the frame only from a standpoint of then I know if I'm working with footage that's larger than HD in an HD frame or conceivably if you're working in 4K and you have 8K footage in your timeline, you understand where I'm going with that. All right. Now, if you wanted to turn guides on, no problem. You could simply just hit guides. You'll see in this case, we're dealing with a 178 to 1 HD set of guides. We could change that to whatever we want it to be, whether it's scope, whether it's 185. I'll just leave it as HD for now. Now, to be honest, I'm not even going to turn that on. All right. What we're going to do now is we're going to get in and we're going to resize this image. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the settings. I'm going to turn the settings off. And I'm going to head into framing. All right. Now you'll notice that right here, the framing is set to no scaling. Okay. I can drop that down. And much like when we were going to import this media, I have the ability to do that scaling change right here. So if I selected this clip, I could come down here and say fit to either width or height. In this case, because it's UHD, it's actually perfectly double the frame size of HD. So it doesn't matter which one I pick. But for example, if you were putting a scope clip into a 1920 by 1080 frame size, you'd want to fit to width. 99% of the time, I'm, I'm going to say you're probably going to want to fit to width. Now, I'm just going to deselect that. We'll cancel out. So in here, what I want to do is I want to come down and I want to set the scaling to be fit to width. As soon as I do, you're going to notice that the image snaps down to do just that, fit to the width. And thankfully, you'll see that the height is the exact same aspect that it should be so everything snaps into exactly where we need it to be. Now, keep in mind, if I undo that, we can, of course, do this process manually. Now, here is a very, very awesome tool that I was shown very early on when working in Scratch. And it wasn't something that I was ever accustomed to. And now that I do it in Scratch, I wish other applications had the same shortcut as well. What I want to do is I want to adjust the scaling. I want to make it lower. And how we're accustomed to doing this in another application is to click and drag to the left. Okay, or to the right. Now, in this case, it works fairly well with scaling. But this is not really how we want to go about doing this. You'll even notice right there I had a bit of a problem as I was starting to move. You'll see it's kind of getting all weird. And, and even when I'm working with the XY offset, you'll notice that it's, it's not really doing what I want it to do. Well, this is where, as I like to call it, twirling comes into play. What exactly is twirling? Well, twirling is instead of clicking and dragging left and right, or as I like to call it, mouse whipping, where you're taking the mouse and whipping it from one side to the other, trying to get the parameters to do what you want them to do. No, you don't have to do any of that. What you can do is click and you can twirl the parameters, in this case, clockwise to make the image move to the right or counterclockwise to make it move to the left. The faster you turn, the faster it moves. And it's a super handy, super fluid way to work. And I got to be honest, I think Scratch has the market cornered on this right now because I've never seen this in any other application. But you'll see how you can now get in and work with UHD frame sizes inside of a 1920 by 1080 border. We could take this, we could maybe only make it, you know, at, I don't know, 60%. We could even take it and rotate it slightly if we needed to. This is where you have complete flexibility over what's going on with the framing of your image. 
Now, what I also have the ability to do here, and I'm actually just going to put this back at 100. So I'm just going to click on the parameter, punch in 100, set it back to 100. What I'd like to do is actually to set both of these to be fit to width. So all I'm going to do in this timeline is make sure that I have all selected. I'm going to say fit to width, and now both images in this timeline, because I only have two, have now been set to fit to width. So this is where working with your scaling and working with your guides hand in hand is exceptionally important. You see how important it is to see the edge of whatever raster dimension you're working on and having the ability to either hide or to see what's going on outside of that frame can be exceptionally important, especially if you're resizing larger than HD images inside an HD frame. This is where you're going to see how much leeway you have to rotate or scale or position that element in your timeline. All right, I want to thank you for watching this great lesson on learning Assimilate Scratch. Now, don't forget to check us out on our different social channels. And if you missed our last lesson, you can simply click on it right here on the screen in front of you. Don't forget as well to hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, you can always send them to me at Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com.